All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about reference management software or citation management software. And I'll have to admit, I'm a little surprised that I'm the one that's got to be making this video and introducing this topic. I would have expected that students would have received some exposure to this in their technical writing classes, but apparently not. And the reason it's surprising to me is that this, to me, is one of the most indispensable pieces of technology to, to help you in your, in your writing because it, it takes care of all of your citation stuff for you and frees you up to get on with the job of writing rather than the job of like formatting all of your references. So we're going to look at a, uh, a package here called Zotero. There are other ones out there like Mendeley or EndNote. Um, there's doubtless you, uh, lots of others out there as well. Uh, Zotero is just the one that I happen to use the most, so uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and uh, run with that one today. I'll add some links for some of these other ones so you can find them as well. They're all going to work mostly the same. Each one will have its, its sort of pros and cons, but uh, you'll get the general idea. So. Uh, the website for Zotero here is zotero.org. You download it. It's an application that runs on your computer. Um, Zotero is nice because it'll run on just about anything. Um, so let's flip over here and, and look at Zotero itself. So this is my Zotero database. Um, lives on my computer. It also syncs up to the, the cloud so that when I install it on a new machine, I can just sort of pull all these references. I don't have to do like some fancy database transfer or, or anything like that. And I have like literally thousands of articles or thousands of references in my database. And so if I just click on one of them here, then like here's all the relevant uh, citation information, right? Title, uh, authors, uh, where it was published, you know, sort of volume issue page information, right? Um, what type of article it is. I can even, you know, if I were so inclined, I could go in and take notes in here. I could add tags to help me find it. Those aren't really features that I use very much. Um, but uh, it, it is sort of a, a pretty full featured application where I can take notes and, and help sort of organize my thoughts and, and, uh, uh, and resources to help me in my writing. I primarily use it just for uh, keeping track of all the citation information and then helping me uh, with that in my in my writing. So um, the, the big thing when you first open Zotero is it's going to be a blank canvas, right? There's not going to be anything in your database. And so you're going to have to get some sources in there. And so there's, there's a couple different ways to, to do that, okay? The first is um, up here in the toolbar, I can uh, click on this and I can choose the type of uh, reference that I want to add, right? Okay, so say like a journal article or a report. If you go down here to more, there's lots and lots of other things that you can add as well, right? So if you need to reference a podcast or you need to reference a, a book or a chapter in a book, right? There's specific uh, reference types for each one of these things. So uh, we can just choose like report, okay? And then uh, let's look at so this is the report that uh, we use in the Forestry 546 class. Let me shrink that up a little bit here so I can uh, see both things, okay? And this report's nice because it actually gives a suggested citation, right? So I could then uh, just sort of copy and paste this information in here, okay? Uh, add the authors. So. Uh, so this is Smith is the last uh, name and uh, Jane Kapler here. So, um, okay, all right. Notice that uh, in, in Zotero, at least, the authors are split. Uh, so it's last name and then first and middle names here, okay? If you need to, uh, let's say there were two authors, you can hit the plus sign here and add an additional author, okay? We don't need that, so I can get rid of it. We don't have an abstract. We do have a report number here, and I can just grab this whole thing and put it in here for the report number, okay? Um, actually, I can uh, just put that there, and then the report type 
is a general technical report. Okay, and let's grab the other things. Okay, this is published in Fort Collins by the USDA Forest Service Rocky Mountain Research Station. So uh, we can go to Fort Collins, Colorado, um, and uh, USDA Forest Service Rocky Mountain Research Station. These things are sort of auto-filling because I've entered in other references that have this information. Okay, so uh, you, if you're if you're starting this out just right from the beginning, you may not have that um, that all those autofill things. But the more you add in here, then the more useful it will it will be. Okay, if there's a URL a place that you're going to get this online, you can add all that stuff in here, and uh, and then you know it's saving this sort of auto saving this as you go, so you don't need to worry about like finding a save button or anything like that. And then notice now it shows up in my uh, in my list. Okay, so this now is a reference that is citable uh, with my Zotero uh, database. Okay, which is really cool. Um, this is sort of the longhand way though of getting stuff into Zotero, and there's actually really cool because there's a lot of shortcuts here. So let's look at a um, uh, couple of actual articles. So. Here's an article that I found. It kind of looks sort of cool using drones for conservation in protected areas. So I want to add this to my Zotero database. Okay. Now I could like hand type all this information in, which, you know, is not going to be terribly fun and, and may have uh, opportunity to make mistakes. Or look at this uh, link right here. Okay. This doi.org slash and then a whole bunch of like gobbledygook here, right? So a DOI number it stands for Document Object Identifier. It's a unique number that is given to each publication and then each article within the publication that is a permanent link to that to that article. Okay, and so the, the actual DOI number is this part right here. It starts ten dot whatever. Okay, so that's a DOI number. Um, the whole thing is sort of the, the DOI link, and so this URL will always point to this article. And the cool thing about it is I can actually right-click and copy that link, and then come back over to Zotero, and check out this magic wand button up here at the top. If I click on that, and then I put my DOI number or that link in there, and then hit enter, okay? All right, check this out, right? It's added it to my database and it has pulled all of the information that I need, okay? Including the abstract, which I typically, like if I have to enter one in by hand, I'm not putting the abstract in. That's just too much effort, okay? So the magic wand button and the DOI numbers are a, a super easy way to get stuff into your uh, Zotero or Mendeley or EndNote database, okay? And uh, it also has all of the stuff in here, like the DOI numbers and the URLs uh, for these things. Okay, so uh, let's look at uh, let's do another one here just for for kicks and grins. Okay, so here's a recent paper from Rangeland Ecology and Management. So let's go ahead and grab the link for that one. This one has a lot of authors, right? So it's no way I want to like hand type all of that information in there. So let's come back over to Zotero magic wand it with the URL, okay? I could also just put the DOI number in too, right? I don't need the URL. Um, DOI number, bing, right? There it is in my database, okay? With all the information that I need, all right? We can also use the magic wand button for, um, for books, okay? Books that have like an ISBN number. So here's a nine, seven, Okay, here's an ISBN number for our textbook we use in Forestry 546, and it just ran the lookup on that and uh, added that in uh, as well. Okay, so you can enter things by hand, and sometimes you have to do that for really old papers or things that are from like a non-traditional source that doesn't have a DOI number or an ISBN number. But whenever possible, use the magic wand button. It saves you a lot of effort. All right. Okay, so that's getting stuff into Zotero, and you know you can do things like like you know organize specific libraries or categories, right? I have one sort of library in here that's just all of my publications. Um, 
I, you know, this is just my, my general one where everything goes that I uh, end up citing in papers that I, that I write, okay? Um, and there's lots of other things you can do, you know, you, as you get into this, you'll, you'll sort of uh, explore more and, and find more of these features and, and get into a workflow that works for you. But the real magic of a reference manager software is the help that it gives you in writing uh, your, your papers. So let's flip over here to a blank document, okay? And uh, let's just type some, some text in here. Um, so, uh, Okay, so here's my somewhat inflammatory statement, um, and I want to add a citation for that. Okay, so check out. So I have the uh, the Zotero plugin for Word that's been installed on my computer as well, and uh, I'm not going to go over like how to to do that. You should refer to the Zotero documentation for getting all of that set up. It's pretty straightforward. But once you have that, then notice I have a, a Zotero entry on my menu at the top here, okay? So I click on that, it gives me some tools, and uh, I can click on this button and add a citation. Now the first thing it's gonna ask me is what sort of reference format do I want to use, okay? And so let's just pick, pick one. I'm just gonna pick ecological applications. This is one I actually added. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'm gonna hit okay here, and so, Okay, it added or brought up this little sort of bar at the bottom here. That's being a little funky. There it goes. Okay, so now I need to add my citation for this, and uh, let's let's see. I'm just gonna add. Uh, let's just add this uh, one that we just did about. Um, uh, where where was that? How about this one? We'll add. Um, our uh, fire synthesis one. So notice what I did there. I typed the author name, okay, which was Smith, and the year, 2015, and then it just searched through my database and found all of the potential ones in there, right? Um, I could also search by, by title things, right? And do like, like synthesis or uh, syntheses, I think it is, right? Yeah, here it is. Okay, so you can you just type keywords in or author names and uh, and search through your your database, and then just hit enter uh, when you have all the ones in there that you want. Okay, so this is the citation that I want, and now I'm just going to hit enter. Come on, there we go. There we go. Okay, and uh, look, it added Smith 2015 in my uh, in my document, right? Which is really cool. Okay. I can also do things like, um, let's, let's try this, right, in uh, 2019, whoa, in 2019, um, Carl et al., um, actually, let's get rid of 2019, Carl et al. Um, wrote, come on, wrote about, okay, there you go, that statement's actually true. Um, okay, so now I need to add uh, a citation in here, right? But I, but I only need the year. I, I don't need the sort of author name here, okay? So in this case, I'll come in and uh, I'll, I'll look for, for my name and uh, conflict, right? Which is this paper that we wrote on conflict and conflict of interest, okay? So this one I'm going to add into the, to the paper, all right? But I only need the year. So now I'm going to right-click... Um, I'm sorry, left click on that, and uh, I'm gonna click suppress author, okay? And hit enter, hit enter again, and notice that it dropped the author part here and just has the, the year, which is what I need in this, in this context, okay? Um, Okay, we can also add auth multiple authors and papers, right? Um, so we could just say like, um, right? So here's uh, a couple of papers. Um, 
by a colleague, Andy Cunliffe, right? Um, so I want to add both of those. I could keep going here, right? And then I just hit enter and it adds these in here uh, auto magically, right? Now the cool thing is, right, I picked this ecological applications style and so it's automatically going to put these papers in in the in the right order, right? Some some journals want you to list them alphabetically, some want you to list them chronologically, and if you have a style loaded in your reference manager, then you don't have to worry about what it is they want. The style manager will actually take care of that for you, okay? So We've done our writing, we got everything uh, to where we want to be, and now I need to build my lit cited section, right? Okay. Um, all right, so check this out, right? All I'm gonna do is hit, hit this button, add and edit bibliography. Bang, it's done for me, okay? Uh, I cannot overstate how much time and effort this saves in writing. It, it, I, I just can't wrap my head around why anyone would write without using a citation management uh, uh, application. Okay. The other thing too, right, is if you if I came in here and edited this one uh, and say I got rid of that citation, right? Look, it just updated my lit cited section here at the bottom. Okay. So Zotero is just keeping track of all of this stuff that's going on and making sure that. All of my citations show up in the lit cited section, and then I don't have like leftover extra things in my lit cited that aren't covered in my um, in my text. Okay, there's one other really cool thing to uh, to point out here. Okay, say I write this really awesome paper and I submit it to a journal, and they come back and they're like, eh, "Sorry, you know, not for us." Right? Okay. Well, then after I, you know. Uh, uh, recover from my bruised ego, I'm going to recraft it, I'm going to submit it to another journal, lo and behold, they have a different citation style. All right, well, no problem, I just come up to my document preferences, and I click, um, you know, maybe I'm going to submit it to one of the cell journals, which has a numeric superscript format. This, click that in the style, and I hit OK, and lo and behold, it has changed my citations now to numeric format. Uh, in the text, and it has changed my lit cited section accordingly to numeric format. Okay, so for class, um, for the Forestry 546 class, I want to see you guys using the citation management software, um, and it may seem a little bit sort of like harsh and mean at first, but it's going to definitely pay dividends as we get later in the class to actually writing the synthesis project because it's going to keep you focused on the writing and what it is that you're trying to communicate rather than focusing on the mechanics of writing your lit cited sections okay that's just not an efficient use of, of your time so uh, reference manager software again it's a critical tool in the toolbox of any professional writer and uh, um, you know, I, I strongly encourage you to, uh, to to spend the time up front to get used to it, and to get your sort of citations into that database. Start building a database for yourself that you can use, and uh, and just get uh, proficient in in how to actually leverage this kind of application to improve your writing.